Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Video True Red, and welcome back to Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion, where last time our Western Roman Empire playthrough began with 20% of the entire empire immediately defecting. We did have 25 territories, we're down to 20, so we have lost 20% of the entire empire immediately. And as a result of that, and just a flimsy economy in general, we currently have a deficit of 9,000 denarii a turn, and the hordes haven't even shown up yet. Now that probably all sounds like a bit of a disaster, not least as, yeah, I think at least two more settlements are going to be joining the rebellion very, very soon indeed. But it's actually not... Actually, I'm quite pleased with how well this has gone, despite the fact that, yeah, probably about half the entire empire is going to rebel. That's fine. I was expecting more, to be honest. We've actually been able to hold on to a little bit more of Gaul than I was uh, genuinely expecting to. And anything else we do lose, uh, we should be able to win back. Plus, some of the empire rebelling... Not always a bad thing, though I have actually realised, yeah, a few things I do want to actually change that I spotted after I actually did the first part. So, uh, yeah, the old Alamanni capital that we took off them, I've decided I'm not going to try and Christianise that place. Very, very bad idea indeed. Because if I do that, it's 100% pagan right now. That, I believe, is minus, like, 100% to public order. So, we can't get away with that. We're going to need to convert it to be more Christian first. So I'm going to cancel that Christian shrine, and instead I'm actually going to be building up... What do we actually want to build in its place? That's 5%. That's also 5%. Yeah, happiness, law, and troops. So Mithras is really, really damn good. Just get that in for 5% paganism conversion. Because the thing is, there's also this building, the Bardic Circle. That's got another 10% paganism. But if I demolish that right now, there'll be no religious buildings in the settlement whatsoever. So it will default to Christian and then immediately start causing trouble next turn. This way, if I build that right now, and then next turn I demolish the Bardic Circle, so hopefully I don't forget to do that, then yeah, we'll actually be in a very positive situation where there's only 5% local building paganism conversion. Once we've got that sorted out, we should hopefully be able to start slowly converting this place to Christianity. Because if need be, I can send some Christian rulers to just hang out nearby. Once we get up to, say, 50% Christian, or maybe even, like, you know, 35% will probably do the job, then we can flick it over to Christianity and that will be marvellous. Not before. Now, time to try and figure out what I can about the hordes. Because, yeah, a few turns ago, the Huns were over here, and the Vandals were over here. But they're probably not there anymore. Diplomacy-wise, however... Okay, they don't seem to have attacked anyone yet, because they haven't actually made any enemies. Now, that's good, because that means, yeah, the Roxolani over here have not actually been murdered. Because if they're murdered, they become yet another flipping horde, which would be bad. So the Vandals and the Huns, so far, have not done anything. That works for me. Though just in case you thought we didn't have enough problems to deal with, I have noticed down over here, Salona has actually got the plague. So don't take that place back, don't even think about it until the plague's gone, and hopefully Salona will not actually spread the plague. Because if the plague hits Italy and the population starts falling and my biggest cities end up with collapsing populations, that's less taxpayers. That's the last thing I need. I'm in enough of an economic hole right now already. Still, focus on what we can do. Draw together the forces I do have into decent little armies. So we've got this captain from Salona heading north and this person around here also heading round to Aquincum. Now Spurius Flavius is very, very important indeed because Spurius Flavius is the most Christian man who ever Christianed. Alright, he's got 10% Christian conversion right there. Another 5% right there. Favourite of God, there is... No, that's plus one influence, minus security. Inspirational Christian, plus 15% Christian. Plus Christian, plus 5%. This man is just a Christian converting machine. Alright, I can send him anywhere and pretty much guarantee it will flip Christian. Which makes him very, very useful indeed for mopping up these two rebellions... And also flipping them to Christian at the same time. So yeah, Spurius Flavius is going to be extremely important for mopping up the East and getting them back on board. Down in Spain, half of that has already broken away. So Publius Flavius, down here, who are you by the way? You're technically a pagan, but screw it, you'll be fine. 
you're a decent leader. You've got plenty of influence. He's just going to march around here and take back the two Spanish settlements. This guy probably can't take back this settlement by himself. He's just going to keep an eye on it. That'll be all absolutely flipping fine. These forces need to head up north and join up with, yeah, Oppius Flavius. Because Oppius Flavius is a good military leader. Courageous, rude health, logistics, quartermaster, all sorts of good stuff in particular, yeah. Between uh, logistics and quartermaster, he can march very, very, very long distances, which is flipping great. So here we go. I've joined him up right here. This city is absolutely fine for the time being, even with only a single unit of cavalry in there. Does actually have, yeah, the ability to train archers, which is maybe not the worst thing in the world. Uh, but yeah, we've also got a port coming in. That'll be very, very useful. So this guy up here is, uh, yeah, mainly actually uh, just peasants. So if he attacks me, we can probably handle that. That's fine. So his next job is to go over here, reclaim Bordeaux, and as for Avaricum... I don't think we can hold a Varicum. That is at 60% right now. Yeah, the only way I can actually hold that would be by spamming peasants, which I've already said. Oh, I physically can't do that. I've already said I don't want to do that because I consider that cheating. But yeah, because the actual Proconsul's Palace is also damaged, there is literally no ability to recruit here whatsoever. So probably the best thing we can do is just pull these troops out because otherwise they'll just take even more damage and start them marching south to join up with this guy. So they can take Bordeaux together, march on Avaricum together. It is a shame that Avaricum is going to go. Nothing we can do about it. In which case, whack up the tax rate. It is going to fall. There's nothing we can do about that. Pull the army out of there. Join them up with this guy. Why did you actually go? I don't know why you went that far. Everyone, abandon the city. There you go. So this place is going to fall. But we will have... A decent army here. And yeah, the reason I want to pull them out is because uh, we've got common to 10 says over here. And those are expensive and difficult to repair. They've already taken quite a bit of damage. In fact, yeah, I'm just going to do some merging so we do at least have three full strength units right there. Got a decent amount of cavalry here as well, actually. And more cavalry coming up from the south. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to merge you. Then I'm going to get rid of you. Because that's 200 denarii I don't really want to be paying. So these two forces together, that's a decent army. They can take back these cities in France. And then we've got this city up here. We'll be able to hold on to that for the time being. I'm keeping these guys propped up with monthly games. But yeah, paganism unrest is going down 10% every single turn. Because I forcibly Christianized the entire empire. And I consider that worthwhile. And yeah, Augustus Trevororum, that place is already under siege. You guys have actually got yourselves... Uh, you may as well get the bashing rams into position. Uh, the thing is, these guys might decide to counterattack because even though it's mainly peasants, in fact, I think all peasants, though I can't actually see, they do have heavy cavalry and they do heavily outnumber me. So we'll see. We'll see what actually goes on there. Colonia Agrippina is all right up here for the time being. Yeah, the Alemanni capital is fine. If I can actually do any retraining, that would be marvellous. Hang on, what actually is that? I can actually repair up the... Yeah, I can repair the arches. That's not too bad at all. And though it's expensive, I'll get this unit of Limatane fixed up too. I just merged some of these units together. They take heavy, heavy damage. So, and you know what? I'll also get you weapons and armor. Even though you're not full strength, just because I want you to have as much survivability as possible. Mediolanium can go down to yearly games for the time being. That is good. This place is Christianizing, flipping fast down another 15% soon. So yeah, actually, we'll be able to actually start putting out the taxes there as well. How's Ravenna doing? Ravenna is... Oh yeah, Ravenna's doing very, very nicely indeed. Once again, religious unrest going down. Shipwright coming up. The trade income is gonna start coming in soon. This is all marvellously good news. This place doesn't actually have a flipping port. Oh, I didn't realise Tarentum didn't have a port. Right, we probably need to get Tarentum a port. Alright, cancel some of the retraining around here because it's not urgent. Cancel the land clearance up here because, yeah, it's way more important to rent them, get support in. Because that is, yeah, look at that. That's an extra, like, 400 denarii every turn in just two turns. So that will pay for itself within two turns. That is very, very worth flipping doing. And, yeah, we're also about to lose Lepkis Magna. 
Honestly, how about you just actually start marching in this direction, purely so you can join up with troops from Carthage. Let's just send, yes, yeah, some decent spearmen down in this direction to reinforce. I don't think you've actually got enough strength to handle that by yourself. So we're about to lose Lepkis Magna. What else are we literally about to lose next turn? We're going to lose a Varicum, but I've got troops coming in to deal with that. That's all absolutely fine. We're going to be taking back Augusta Trevororum. I've got troops around here taking back this. So we are taking territories back. The big question mark for me is kind of Britain right now, because in a perfect world, you knock out Dalraida before they're actually able to do anything to you. But on this occasion, that hasn't happened. That hasn't happened at all, because they were able to take York I to actually divert my troops back to take it back. So as a result of that, they've had time to dig in, and they've got their good troops over from Ireland. So... I think for the moment we just need to hold out here, which is a shame because it's very worthwhile being able to just knock out the picks really early on, because then the troops in England can be diverted over into Europe. Right now we do not know where the hordes are. I'm bringing my spy up pretty quickly, just to basically try and get them over here to figure out what's going on. In fact, you know what? Next turn, if I can get enough money together, I might train a new spy, just to basically send him off in that direction. Actually, a quincum, by any chance do you have... No, you don't even have a trader. All right, who's got the nearest markets? Here we go, Ravenna's got a market. So, how much is a spy? 350. If I cancelled all the retraining over here, would that actually be able to pay for that? 300... Yeah, okay, fine. So, I'll actually give these guys weapons and armour. That's fine. And I'm going to get a new spy out at Ravenna purely so I can basically just send him off in this direction and try and figure out what the hell's going on in this part of the world. Because knowing where the hordes are and whether they're about to go and trigger more hordes would be very, very useful indeed. Ah, yes, and don't forget for money, send my diplomat further north. We just need to get him into Saxon territory. I believe their capital's about there. Then we can sell them trade rights and map information. Bit more money for me in the long run for the trade rights, but more importantly, they'll probably be able to be fleeced for about two to three thousand denarii, which is just flipping marvellous. Once we're done with them, head over here, do the same for the Lombardi and the Burgundy, who are somewhere around this part of the world. All right, bring on the next set of rebellions, and oh yeah, that ship. That ship I've been meaning to break down. Actually, I think I might keep that one, just in case I need to move troops backwards and forwards. And Lepkis Magna, Avaricum, yeah, we knew about them already. So now about a third of the entire empire has actually uh, broken away, which is fine. This is all completely expected. So you get over here. That is three decent quality troops. How much is here? Not much, and that's going to be mainly peasants. But the thing is... I think it's really, really worthwhile Christianizing the Empire immediately. Because if you Christianize the Empire straight away, then even if it flips to being Western Roman Empire rebels, it's still Christian. They never change the religion. They'll never knock down one religious building and put a different one up in its place. So I would say what I'm doing is worth doing. Because when I take it back, it will be much more Christian than it used to be. And every single turn that passes... As the pagan religious unrest goes down, we can lower the amount of games we're paying for. So we're down to minus 7,700, which as a deficit is not that bad. So as for you guys, help me out with that deficit just a little bit. How about some trade rights and map information for a giant pile of money? Oh, flip, the Saxons are holding out here. They just want trade rights. They're not willing to pay for it. Okay, fair enough, but surely they're willing to pay for map information. Maybe I was too slow to get to them and I've already actually spent some of that money on troops and whatever. They might not actually have the money. So, okay. They're willing to pay for the map information at least. That is good. So, okay. What we've now got is minus 6,700. Now, how are we going to make some of that money back? It doesn't actually matter that I've got a debt, by the way. Like, there's no game over if you're, like, in debt for too many turns or anything like that. The only reason it matters is because debt will keep piling up. And until you get out of that debt, you physically can't build anything. You can't build any buildings. You can't train any troops. You can't do any retraining. So, it's its own penalty, to be honest. 
Right, this spy, get him moving in the right direction. Vicus Alemani over here, don't forget, demolish the Bardic Circle. So get that down out of the way. Marvellous. So this place is now, yeah, 20% Christian, 20% Paganism. So it's not going to flip in either direction. It's going to stay 100% Pagan. So we need a Christian to come over there and convert them. So it sure is flipping lucky that Valentinianus the Wrathful is right here. By the way, fun thing about Valentinianus the Wrathful, why he's actually called the Wrathful and why they've given him uncontrollable rage. According to history, and this might be slightly pseudo-history, I don't know whether this is really actually true or not. The way that Valentinian I died was some barbarians came to see him and Valentinian got so flipping annoyed at them, he started yelling at them and he yelled at them so hard that he burst a blood vessel and died. He hated barbarians so much that he died yelling at them. That's how Valentinian the Great died, according to the accounts we have. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it's kind of fun. So the city he's in right now, Mediolanium, that's up to, yes, yeah, 72% Christianity. So I'd say it's fair we move him on. That guy's just got a drunken uncle, but he is 46. It might be worth actually handing, yeah, the retinue onwards. Because bear in mind, back in Rome, you could transfer retinue between people. You couldn't do that in future because it just let you keep, like, you know, people alive forever. So that's absolutely fine. Plus one to influence, minus one from unrest. And plus one command. Yeah, you know what? I don't need those. I'm going to pass them on. So those have now been passed on to the other guy. He's going to move over here. He's not really needed over there, by the way. Who are you, by the way? Oh, yes, you're Gratianus the Lily Livered. He's one of my favorite guys inside the entire empire because he is catastrophically bad at fighting. It's kind of hilarious. It's a bit of a joke by the devs. They've put this character here who has, I believe, basically the lowest morale you can have in the game. So he's got the special position from the Emperor that gives minus one morale because he's the Imperial Legal Advisor. So apparently the troops don't like that. Minus one morale from that. Mother-in-law, minus one morale from that. He's incredibly depressed, minus four morale from that. His troops hate him, minus three morale from that. Craven Coward, minus three morale from that. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, pretty amazing. Oh, and he's terrified of barbarians, so if he's fighting them, that's another minus one morale. So, yeah, he's kind of terrible, but I kind of like him nonetheless. He's adorable. Right, so the Emperor's just hanging out here for one turn, helping to flick this place to be a bit more Christian. That's good. Next turn, he'll actually... Actually, could you just make it over there? Yeah, you can just make it over here right now. Let's actually just get him right here. Because he's standing inside this area right now, meaning... Look at that another flipping 20% has actually started showing up. Now, that's actually bad for the local public order because right now this place is officially pagan and I'm about to start introducing Christianity into this place. What well, looks like, yeah, about 15% Christianity in one go. So some people are just basically waiting to be converted right there, which is marvellous. So the process of conversion has begun. Once it gets up to maybe 40%, we'll flick that place to be Christian. And once there's a Christian building down, we should start snowballing. And that will also help the nearby settlements too. I need to find somewhere that I can actually knock down right now. Thankfully, yeah, Opus Flavius, who's a big damn hero, can get straight over here in no time at all. So, actually, can you make it over to... Hmm, that's interesting. These troops might just be able to get this place under siege immediately, which would probably be worth doing. Yeah, go on then. So you, get over here and then put this place under siege, please, just to make sure we get this done. And then you, merge into that army. That old trick still works. Opius Flavius will join them next turn. Then we can storm Bordeaux. Beautiful. Two rams, that's all we're going to flip and need. It's just basic wooden walls. So the fight back begins over here. I'm just going to check the financial tab, by the way. <laughs> Minus 15,000. Minus 15,000 next turn. Absolutely beautiful. The dead situation is getting a bit out of hand. So fortunately, we've got Cathargan Noah right here. And this is a big, big city. How much have we already built here? We've got precisely one siege tower. I mean, I could go in with just one siege tower. I could probably pull that off. I won't be able to do any fighting on the walls, but in all fairness, if I did, they're just peasants. I can probably go in with a single siege tower. 
and that would probably get me enough money if I sacked the place to actually just get myself back into the black. Just anyway. Watch out in Spain, by the way. Yeah, these troops are actually stepping outside. What are we going to do here? In all fairness, we could probably just stand and fight. I'm just going to move these troops to here. Because, yeah, it looks like there's a bit of hillside over in this part of the world. So, if I just stand right here. Yeah, that's an even bigger hill. 141 of the Barbarian Spearmen. These guys are decent. Defensive 19 is no joke. That is not bad at all. Attack's only 6. But these guys, they're nothing but peasants. I think he'd win that, especially with an uphill advantage. Yeah, we'll see about that. I might actually be able to knock out that army immediately, which would be lovely. As for Aquincum, that place is now secure. 125% public order, of which... Only 40% is garrison. So I can basically pull all these troops out of here. Well, most of them. Because 10% of it is also going to be influence. We should still be able to move most of the troops out of there. You get over here. You get over here as quickly as you like. Yeah, there's not going to be much in Conuntum. So how about we actually get you moving in that direction with these guys. Don't take everything... But take some of the good lot. Ooh, you've actually got some Mation Auxilia over here. Yeah, Roman Heavy Cavalry. These guys are flipping decent. Attack of 10, charge bonus of 6, defense of 22. Again, the Western Roman Empire army is... It's not great. It's expensive, and it doesn't hit that hard. But it is very strong defensively. You've got good quality armor. Okay, let's just try taking out these lads right here. Though, in all fairness, I could just... I could just attack right now. It looks like I could just do that. Okay, step out over here. You're doing all right. That is... That's okay. Do I want to leave one more unit back here? Yeah, I'm going to leave one unit of archers just to seal the deal. 75%. That'll be fine. You can't make it there. You can't make it there. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to get the siege underway at Carnuntum right now. So you put that place under siege. Everyone else merge into there. These guys can be reinforcements coming in soon. Could have actually got these guys to merge right over here, which is a bit of a shame, but no matter. We knock that place down, and then we probably just go and knock down this place as well, purely for the sake of actually burning it to the ground for a bit of extra money. This would actually be appropriate, by the way. This is the uh, the Campus Quaddy, because, yeah, this is actually a real place that at roughly this point in history, Valentinian the Great really did have some problems with and actually tried to build forts in an attack. So, yeah, kind of cool. Feels appropriate that we'd actually do that. That'd be flipping lovely. Where'd that spy go, by the way? Here we go. You just uh, head up in this direction. Just try and find what you flipping can if you'd be so good. On the plus side, we're making a lot more trade than we used to. Trade is looking good. That's gone up from like 6,000 to like 8,000. So immediately, some of the ports we've put together, like these over here, that is making a positive impact on the actual balance sheet. I know it doesn't look like it, but that's only because like a third of the Empire isn't part of the Empire anymore. Once we start bringing these bastards back into line, and we get a big chunk of money in from attacking them, things will be looking better. And in fact, actually, I feel like that is what we need to do. I'm going to try and take Cathargan Noah with a single tower, which is going to need to be done very carefully, but I think we can pull it off. Here we go. So this guy's got himself about 1,500 odd peasants. Which aren't, to be clear, not as bad as peasants used to be in the Roman factions. Peasants in the Roman factions used to be like one attack, one defense. Now they're up to two attack, five defense. So they're still terrible, but they're not as terrible as they were. How about you, by the way? Been in the war. So this guy is tough, but I've got proper spearmen. These barbarian spearmen do get bonus versus cavalry. And I've actually got myself plenty of alright cavalry myself. I think we should be alright here. Here we go. Large city, large walls. And also, <laughs> I just want to draw attention to this because it's kind of hilarious. Yeah, when you've got a large city and you knock down its giant awesome temple and you just build a basic Christian shrine, yeah, there's nothing to actually go around it. If you've got like tiny barbarian shrines, then the game kind of fills the space around them with parkland, but it doesn't do it for the Christian shrine. So you just end up with this massive, massive empty plaza, which is kind of good. But it can actually be quite useful because yeah, this much empty space, there is actually a spot for a decent sized pitch battle if that's what you want to do. So that's kind of fun. Anyway, what I think we're going to be doing here is, yeah, picking the right area to approach. 
I've got to pick one of the angles where no tower will be firing on me. Because if any tower fires on this thing and it does actually catch fire, that's it. The attack's over. Here we go. This will do. North of the city, we've actually got ourselves a good spot, I'd say, right over here. This tower's not going to be able to fire on me. This tower's not going to be able to fire on me. Watch out, because some of the towers do actually have, like, internal facing holes. So these guys will be able to fire over here, I believe. But yeah, if I just draw this up right over here then just move it a little bit in this direction then attack the walls that should be a good angle and then depending on where the enemy decide to draw up if they're drawn up over here i'll just send my guy round to actually open up that gate and if they're over there vice versa so that should all work out fine and there we go as i should have expected peasants over by the gates over there so if i just basically move these troops like this and then just move them in over here we should be able to sneak in, hopefully just inside the effective range of both of these towers. Now, there is one small problem with Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion, or rather a problem with Rome Total War that is most obvious in Barbarian Invasion, which is uh, level 4 walls have a bit of an unfortunate bug that sometimes occurs, which is troops, when they actually get the tower to the wall and then kind of go over here to start climbing the tower, just don't climb the tower. They just sort of bug out, bunch up down at the bottom of the tower and just never get up there. And if that happens, it just sort of happens. I searched high and low for a mod to fix it. I found one mod that fixed one of the symptoms that might cause it, but I couldn't find a mod that actually reliably fixed it. And you don't notice it so much in the base game because level 4 walls aren't a huge part of the game. You're much more often dealing with level 2, level 3, or for the very bigger cities, level 5. So it's not a big deal. But in Barbarian Invasion, huge numbers of cities that you've got have level 4 walls and you'll never have the money to upgrade them. So basically, if you're ever about to attack a city with level 4 walls, drop a save because sometimes you just get screwed over by this stupid bug. Let's see if it's going to happen the very, very first time that it could happen in the game. So if they start walking up here, we're fine. I think we're good. Uh, one of them's bunching up a little bit, but no, that seems to be okay. So yeah, if it happens, they'd all be bunched right here at the bottom, and they wouldn't be able to actually get inside the tower at all. It looks like this is all as it should be. So we've been lucky on this occasion, but yeah, that can just happen, and it's very annoying, and I cannot find a fix for it. So just keep that in mind. Just drop saves before you actually attack major cities. Because if it happens, it can totally screw you over. The only half solution is, if you select the units while they're bunched up at the bottom, not making any progress, and then just basically incredibly quickly spam right-click move commands onto the bit of the wall they're trying to move onto, sometimes that will cause one or two of them to get out of the bug and actually climb up to the top of the tower, and you can actually very slowly get all of them up there, but it does pretty much screw up any chance of taking the walls, because it means they'll just get up there in small numbers. So, what we need to do with these guys now is just start taking the walls bit by bit, taking these towers, because yeah, in Rome Total War, once you'd walk for a tower, then you change its alignment from the enemy to you permanently until the enemy takes it back again. So yeah, we can basically just move along here, taking all of these towers, and as the enemy are over there, we can just move around here, take these gates, and actually get in that way. Though, honestly, we could just actually... Ooh... I could just lay a trap for them. Because if you get near enough to the enemy, they'll come and fight you on the walls. But if I actually move over... Ooh. If I'm here, I'll actually have support. Okay. I've got a plan here. Step one. I'm going to bring up the archers. Make sure they're not in skirmish mode. Turn off fire at will for now. Because archers up on the walls can be very, very powerful indeed. Okay, archers have made it up onto the wall here. So, if I take these spearmen and charge them into the towers here, taking this here tower, then hopefully what I'm going to do is I'm going to bait some of these peasants to come and actually walk straight in to the fire of the tower, which is great. Together with the fact that, yeah, my archers can move into a position over here, start firing at anything that approaches, together with getting some shots down at these guys and at the general over here. It's going to mean I lose a few troops, but I think it's actually going to be worthwhile. So you guys, get over here as fast as you can. While you're actually doing that, you guys get into position over here and over here. 
And everybody should be running if you'd be so kind. So these towers are, yeah, these towers have started firing at us. And they are powerful, by the way. These are really, really powerful towers. So in a moment, we will have taken them. But just look how much damage they're doing. Even to like, you know, decently armored spearmen. But now they belong to me. Good, good, good. And hopefully, am I actually now close enough to take out you or draw your attention? Not yet. Not yet, but these guys are actually starting to... You're not planning to come up onto the walls, are you? Ooh, maybe they are. I'm not sure. And now my archers are in a decent position on a lovely elevated spot. I'm just going to tell them to fire it. Well, uh, let's see who they go for, because they'll probably go for... Yeah, a handful of peasants down over there. These guys will probably wake up at some point. Yeah, we're doing a bit of light damage. Barely any fires actually being put on those guys. And you're definitely not getting any hits in. Right, you, go for the actual general over there. Because this is a good position because, yeah, the general's got his back to us. Sadly, the shields are facing us, which the game does actually factor in. We should still be able to do some light pot shots to you at the bare minimum. In comes a bunch of fire. Absolutely flipping marvellous. Where are you guys going to try and go now, by the way? In fact, you know what? You, join up on that fire, please. Oh, they're going, ah, oh, they're going that way. Are you going that way or... I don't know where you're going right now. Oh, but this is good. This is good right here. So this tower that works for me, I can hear it firing. It is firing down into the general, these peasants, and these peasants are going to start taking casualties very, very fast indeed now. So this tower is starting to do the work. And better and better this general is. Oh, I thought he was going to run past. Yeah, you guys just keep laying the fire down on that guy. Because that heavy cavalry, that's really the only thing that poses any threat to us whatsoever. Now, these are basic damage five archers. No armor piercing damage on them whatsoever. These guys have very, very heavy armor indeed. This is going to be a slow process, but it's wearing them down. It's doing damage. Because as soon as these guys are dead, there's basically nothing stopping me just sending in my general and supporting cavalry to just pretty much straight up murder the surviving peasants. Oh, this is what I wanted to see right here. The general's retreating, which means we've now got a shot right into his back. No shield protecting him anymore. Look at that. Even basic damage five archers with no armor piercing damage can do a lot to a flipping bodyguard when he turns his back to them. Oh, and he's come back for another go-to. The general's returned to the front lines. Meaning, come on, guys. Guys, get another shot in the back. Get another shot in the back here. Come on, guys. Turn it around. Ah, oh, they were a bit slow on that occasion. The other spearmen have been brought up. And though they're going to take more casualties walking into the odd tower, best thing I can do for them right now is basically just, yeah, have them go around here, take the towers one by one, take this gate. Once another gateway falls, the enemy might well panic. And bloody hell, they're already panicking, in fact. Oh, this is just flipping beautiful. Right, guys, 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 guys. Make sure you're attacking the actual general's bodyguard right now. Oh, that's the stuff. That's the stuff right there. No, don't go down onto the street, though. Don't go down onto the street. Stay exactly where you are, and yeah, be ready. Because once the actual other gateway goes down, I strongly suspect these guys will abandon this gate, and then it's just fish in a barrel along this street. Sadly, on this occasion, they're holding position. But that's fine. As soon as my troops get onto the plaza... They won't. So I'm just going to take these here cavalry, move them around to the gate I just opened, and then just basically move them on the plaza. I would rather the cavalry did not engage if at all possible, because there's no stables here. Any damage I take, I really will struggle to heal off. This is the downside of demolishing your own military infrastructure before a town falls. It means when you take it back, you can't retrain any troops that were damaged during the process of taking it back. Oh, here's what I was hoping for. My troops are getting close by to the plaza. They're now abandoning the towers. They're going to try and make it back to where they think they ought to be. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, move my spearmen back over here. Please don't actually shoot these guys. Just stop for a second. Stop, 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 stop. I'm going to move these spearmen back over here. And I'm going to use those spearmen to block up this street right here because this is pretty much the only way the AI is going to know to try and path along. So yeah, this should work pretty flipping well because the only other way for them to get around to the plaza because there's no way through here will be for them to go 
all the way around here, all the way around here, then take a right here and loop all the way around the Proconsul's Palace, which they will not do, because they simply don't know how to do that. Instead, here we go, Operation Fish in a Barrel. So my archers have the high ground, and they are shooting at peasants in the back. This is just free XP right here, spot on. Ooh, also, their generals decided to come and attack. Oh, that's a bit of a shame, actually. I didn't actually spot that he was coming out, but that's fine. I've got my own general coming up the rear right here. These guys are already damaged. They're totally surrounded, meaning they should break pretty quickly. I'm going to lose a fair few cavalry, but they're going to break straight away, which is good. And then we're just going to slaughter them, so there's going to be no second attack there whatsoever. So that is... That's not a terrible result, really. I've lost about maybe 20 light cav right there. These guys are already breaking because uh, what else can they do? They're going to be passing through my cavalry on their way to the plaza. So now we can basically just repeat that trick for any of the other peasants. Bear in mind, of course, the objective here isn't really to win. It's to win taking as few casualties as possible because I have literally zero way of recovering from any casualties I do take. Here we go, another unit is ready to move into position along Kill Street, so put some arrows into them if you'd be so kind, and I've also got cavalry coming in just to actually seal the deal, and in go the arrows, in come the horses, and these guys should immediately break, stop firing if you'd be so kind. These units over here can start firing on these troops down over here, which will be lovely. We've taken, like, you know, maybe a very, very small handful of uh, light taps that cavalry. I think we lost, like, one horse there. So you guys just get in over here. Once you're nice and among them, finish them off, please. Chop them all down. Spot on. Another unit of peasants enters Kill Street, is hit by some flipping arrows from the rear. In come the Barbarian Infantry, and they immediately break. Please stop firing. Cavalry, work on the pursuit. And this unit actually broke before we even engaged them. Flipping spot on. You guys get on here. You guys get on here. That is all the peasants around here taken care of for minimal casualties. Some very light knocks to archers. Because, yeah, these towers are actually hitting a couple of these guys in friendly fire. Which does happen, unfortunately. Every unit in this game does have friendly fire on it. So, you can't avoid that sometimes. I'm going to move my cavalry over to here. So, I'm just going to move it way over here. And I'm going to move my spearmen over here. So, we've still got one unit of peasants on the plaza. And they won't break on the plaza. So we need to come up with a solution for them. The solution, by the way, Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion, was not to throw away a handful of cavalry through bad pathfinding. That was not the solution I was looking for. But okay, fine. Throw away some cavalry, whatever. Though actually, this could all work out because now we've got these guys very close by. All right, archers, lure them in. The Barbarian Infantry, that's the wall they're not getting past. 19 defense. And as soon as they actually come in this direction off the plaza to chase... Come on, guys. Here you come. Let's go. As soon as they're in that position... Yeah, and they actually engage with the Barbarian Infantry, which will be a slow process. I can use my... They're actually breaking well. Wow, that's... Oh, no, that guy's only eight. Here we go. He's already wavering. Now, I simply deploy my cavalry to close the trap. So... Get my cavalry in over here as quickly as possible, and... Okay, they broke a bit too quickly. <laughs> they broke slightly too quickly. Right, get the cavalry back out of there. Get the cavalry back out of there. I don't want the cavalry engaging with even basic peasants. No, 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 no. That's no good at all. Here we go. Deploy my barbarians, and now send in the general around the side. We'll just slam the cavalry into them over and over for the charge bonuses. We will take some very, very light knocks from doing this, but uh, it's nothing we can't handle. So the general comes around over here. 146, wavering, but yeah, they're refusing to go off the plaza, unfortunately. Let's just get in over here, hit you. Why are you over there? I don't know why you're over there. You just come in, look at that, that charge bonus right over there. Pull the general back. Get the cavalry over here. Just slam into their rear over and over. Charge bonus is ridiculous. Cavalry is so powerful in this game. And now, once again, 92. Get in their cavalry. Get in their backs. Be flipping beautiful. Oh, that's the stuff right there. And at this point, the final few rebels have been shoved straight to the middle of the spearmen. 
and had just been picked apart. So, okay, you know what? I'm pretty happy with that. My army is still an effective fighting force. We can move straight on to the next. Yep, yeah, of a thousand men deployed, we've still got almost 900. I'm happy with that. Now, here's the big thing, of course. Cathaga Noah is still very, very unhappy. So what if we were to, yes, here we go. If we exterminate the population, that's 13,000 denarii from looting and 14,000 dead people. Now, this is a bit of a mixed bag sort of a situation because that's 14,000 people that are not paying tax. But that's also a giant pile of money I can use to invest in ports, roads, trade buildings, other buildings that generate more money elsewhere. Meanwhile, right now this place will be stuck paying low tax. The smaller number of taxpayers can be charged higher tax and I'll need less troops to garrison the place. So uh, at this point in the game, I am happy to engage in extermination because now this place is a happy, happy, happy town and I am back in the black. In fact, if we look over at the financials right now, yeah, I'd only be minus 300 next turn. We're down to only minus 7,000 in terms of deficit. That's not terrible. That's not terrible at all. Christianity here is up to 67% and rising fast. So yeah, paganism is going down 5% in terms of unhappiness every single turn. That is good. That is very, very good indeed. Repair that for 48. Sure, why not? And... How much of this is actually due to all? Oh, some of this is going to be due to you, isn't it? But then again, we can lower the tax rate. So if we lower the tax rate, then it's 60% due to Garrison, 40% due to this guy. Right, so we do still need to leave some troops here, but not all of them, not a huge amount. 5% of that is also due to the fact this guy is a pagan, 40% is unrest that will fade over time too. I think we're okay to take most of this out with us. I will leave, yeah, one set of archers. I'll actually leave you some of the cavalry. If I actually do that, yeah, I'll take you. I'll take you. I'll just actually take you lot, yeah. This might be enough for me to actually start heading on my way with. Yeah, there we go. That's not a terrible army. That'll do for knocking out all of this, I'd say. Plus... We do actually need to get a couple of extra watchtowers down. So get a watchtower down over there and then head in this direction, head over open ground. So it's going to take you a few days to get there, but this place will calm down. We're not paying for extra games. Honestly, this is probably fine. In fact, Tarako's looking pretty happy right now. I might just actually send you... Yeah, I'm just going to actually send these guys some extra troops. Can you guys actually spare even more... Looks to me... Oh, blimey, Tarako's on daily games. Oh, that's... Okay, how long's that been the case? <laughs> that that shouldn't be. That that shouldn't have been the case. Right, okay, uh, how much of this is due to Garrison? 5% due to Garrison. This guy is terrible, by the way, Herius. He is very, very bad indeed. Uh, he's loyal, so he's trustworthy, but... Lazy, glutton, inferior builder. Yeah, trade income down... Not good. Not good for a settlement with a port at all. You know what? A handful of extra troops is not the worst thing in the world. That's fine. So they're down to monthly games, not daily anymore. Anyone else, potentially? And also, what else can we do here? Because now we could potentially get... Oh, mines. How much is this worth? That's 200 a turn. Expensive, but not terrible. Uh, you. You can actually get yourself... Here we go, an extra, yeah, just a handful of extra there, or the highways would be worth not as much and take a bit longer. But as Christianity takes over this place thoroughly, we can start putting up the tax rate. This is good stuff. Here we go, Mediolanium currently doesn't have a port. We can get a few extra hundred denarii out of a port right there. Good flipping stuff. The Emperor's still floating around over here. What else can we take back immediately? Because Spain is now nearly back in our hands. This place will be next turn. Augusta Trevororum. That is... That's a lot of peasants. That might be a few too many peasants for... Yeah, for basic Limitane. I will actually just, yeah, siege this place out a little bit longer. Perfect world. Get some extra troops in. In fact, actually, there are all these extra troops down here we're not doing anything with right now. 
Okay, we could actually deploy some extra troops in that direction to support. I think it's now safe to say we can afford to retrain these troops because sooner or later the hordes are coming. So get these troops fixed up, please. Thank you. That's just flipping lovely. And uh, Marcus the Gambler. You know what? You're a decent infantry commander. Let's get you a little bit better armed too because if it comes to it, general versus general fighting, that's important stuff. I'm going to send a small detachment of troops, including the Comet 10 says, who will be able to slaughter peasants like nobody's business. Yeah, we'll send them up north, together with some extra arch support and some basic limitane. So you, head in this direction, join up with this guy next turn, then we should be in a position to move in. Just continue training more. Hang on, what have you actually got right now? You've got one ram. This place has walls. Okay, Probably get some ladders ready. There we go. Lovely. Get a trader down over here on Carolus. Carolus actually has, yeah, a decent trade potential right there. Rome's already well built up, so there's probably nothing we can do there. I could build highways. How much would that be worth? That's, that's an extra 400 trade right there, thanks to this guy's help. It's expensive. Highways cost... How much do they cost? 2,000. You know what, that pays for itself inside five turns. Maybe do that, unless there's more ports we can build somewhere else. According to the game, Augusta Vindelicorum doesn't have roads. Despite the fact roads are... Okay, if I build... Right, well I need to build roads, so I'm allowed to build paved roads. So screw it, we'll just kind of have that be done. That's, that's fine, I suppose. This place could probably do with uh, paved roads. How much would that be worth? It's worth a little bit. It's not much, to be honest, but having paved roads here just so I can move my troops around more quickly, not the worst thing in the world. Get it done. And this place could have a port. That would be... Oh, that'd be a massive increase. Yeah. Okay. Ports. Ports everywhere. There's no ports. One rare bit of good news, though. As far as I can tell, I'm not about to lose any more territory. I think I'm about done losing territory for the time being. Nothing else is rebelling or threatening to rebel. So now we can begin the fight back. Take it back, anything that's causing too much trouble, burn it to the flipping ground, and then use that money to fund infrastructure in more productive places. Everything's gonna be fine, probably. Now, time to see whether the massive peasant army in Spain is planning to march up the hill at a single damaged unit of barbarian infantry. Because if it is, I have no idea who wins that fight. Oh, they've decided they're going to do it. That's 100% what's happening here. So, Captain Lysianus, this one's on you. You've got a thousand angry peasants coming up the hill at you. I don't know whether you could win this or not. To be honest, there's no real strategy here. It's just a question of positioning. But we do probably have a hill. Because I did deliberately position you in such a position as there should be hills floating around here. Here we go. In fact, actually, not only do we have a hill, we've actually got ourselves a weird building right here. Okay, this is interesting. Where's the right spot to draw up? This doesn't look too bad. This looks... that's alright, but I might be better off using this building to stop any form of flanking. Because if I just draw up, like, right here, very, very wide indeed, then... Hmm. You know what? I'm just going to begin. I'm going to see where they start. I think that's actually not so bad at all. Because these guys are going to get all bunched up right here. So this is fine. Everybody, stay where you are. Guard mode. Just hold your position. But then again, I don't have uphill in this position. Uphill would be nice, but you know what? I'm going to fall back. I'm going to fall back and I'm going to spread as wide as I can over here. Or maybe... Oh, oh, where's the right spot here? Here we go. This would appear to be a pretty steep slope. Not the steepest, but it'll do. It does give me the uphill advantage. I'm going to spread myself as wide as I flipping can. I don't have access to any special formations or anything, but... It looks like they are... Are oh, they trying to flank me? Because if they try and flank me, I, I'm pretty doomed. No, it looks like they're not. So now, now it's just a question of who wins this fight. Because they massively, massively outnumber me. But 
I have got so much defense, so much armor. I don't know who's going to win this. They've already lost, like, yeah, quite a few troops right there. They've lost, like, 12 or so. It's purely a question of morale because sooner or later, one of them is going to break. But if one of them breaks, then potentially all of them are going to break. It's just going to trigger a mass rout. Oh, I'm being flanked, though. I think these guys are... No, they're not clever enough to flank because they're just peasants. They haven't figured out basic military tactics. Now, unfortunately, my leader is over here. And rather embarrassingly, yeah, one of his just got knocked to the ground. No, that was the standard bearer. Okay, the standard bearer is dead. This is my leader. If he dies, even though he's a captain, that is going to be very bad for morale. Ooh, how's this going? My guys are shaken. These guys are steady, and that's not good at all. Honestly, what more could I have done? I mean, maybe I should have actually drawn myself up into a really, really tight bun. But then I'd have just been flanked more easily. Like, the enemy would have accidentally flagged me. I'm up to wavering. Special ability rally troops. That brings me back up to shaken and then steady. But this isn't going to last forever. These guys are steady. Oh, I need one of you to break. You're down to 100. Wow, actually. I'm surprised you guys are... No, 100 was me. These guys are 158. They've lost, like, nearly 100 troops, but... They're holding on. These guys are steady. Because, yeah, I can just keep spamming the rally troops ability. Because I am the general unit. And it's working for now. These guys are steady. But they're tired. Okay. Once peasants start getting tired, they're going to start losing morale pretty quickly. We're still shaken at this point. Come on. How's my actual leader doing over there? He's... He's doing a good job somewhere. He's just... Yeah, you stabbed those flipping peasants. But now... Now we're starting to get surrounded. Activate rally troops again. They're shaken. Oh no, these guys are steady. No, I think we've lost this. Unfortunately, there's just too much firepower. Had this fight been done with Rome Total War Peasants, where it's one attack, one defense if you're Roman, I would have stood a chance. But these guys have, yeah, defense of five. Which is not terrible, because these guys only have... Oh, there's my leader. That's, that's a problem, which means I no longer have rally, because that is tied to your leader, not to the unit. And down they go. You know what? This is fine. We've done some damage to them. It's okay. So, just when you thought things were starting to stabilize and look reasonable, another problem starts coming into focus, which is, obviously, some cities are still growing. So Syracuse has just expanded. Who else has just expanded? Cordoba has just expanded. And another town up north has also just flipping expanded. If I don't actually invest in the new main capital buildings, then Squalor is going to get out of hand in those places fast. Like, really fast. And then we're just going to have even flipping more rebellions. So, yeah, yet more problems have just shown up. Still, let's do what we can here. We have got a decent army right here under the command of Oppius Flavius, who is... Uh, Good. Good, good, good. I'm a bit concerned about, yeah, apparently loyal. He's only three loyalty, which is not spectacular, but he'll do the job for the time being, all right? We can make sure he actually pays for himself. So, Tarako, you can go over to, yeah, yearly games. So, once again, step down the games here. Reinforcements also going in this direction. There we go. Now we've got the troops we need to knock out these two cities. Let's start bringing the empire back together. All right, number one, Bordeaux. And I've got a plan here. All right, we're going to win this one. Should just be a case of murdering some peasants. But this is not just about winning it. It's not just about winning it with minimal casualties either. I want Oppius Flavius to get some experience for his troops and level up his own abilities. Because if we just basically swing him through Bordeaux onto a Varicum and then move him towards the front. By the time he actually reaches the front, it's possible the hordes are going to start making an appearance. So having a decent commander with some decent traits and some high XP units floating around, that could be very, very useful indeed. Here we go. Large town, and honestly, because the population is not so high, we might not even want to exterminate this place. We might be happy to just take it back into the empire. Now it's nice and Christianized, uh, we might be able to bring it in and it won't cause that much trouble. But we might just need to burn it down just for the money. We'll see. We'll see how many people are here and how much money there is to be got out of it later. Now, my archers are going to be in position to start firing on these peasants as soon as the gates go down. This should all be absolutely fine. More peasants coming in. Once again, one actual commander. Ooh, are you trying to build stables? Lardy flipping dar. 
Here we go. Archers are getting in some light taps here. Some peasants are just moving around, running away, presenting their backs to archers. Terrible idea. Even archers as terrible as the ones in the Western Roman Empire, they can do some good damage to peasants with their back to them. Now, next up, the Imperial German Bodyguard. 83 men. Ooh, this might be the faction leader of the actual Western Rebels, in fact. So... Uh, this is all fine. We can get some lovely peeler on him because I believe the peeler is armor piercing. I'm not sure if that's true for the Limitane. I think it might be. I think all peeler are armor piercing. All right, Commenter 10 says, floating around right here. I'd say, time to send in a trap. These guys are now actually out of their peeler. I'm just going to send them right in over here. Their job is purely to bait all the enemies who are floating around in the back streets over here back to the front door. Because the Comet 10 says should have a shot at anything that moves in this direction. Including, hopefully, the general. Though it looks like he's actually pulling back this way to get back to the plaza. But that's fine because Limitane should be able to handle peasants easily enough. Here we go. Archer fire coming in. Peasants. Coming in to try and attack this line right over here. Limitane, second wave, coming in, ready to get round the back of you. And once the peasants are surrounded, they will break immediately. So these guys are to steady. You're to wavering already. Oh, here come the actual... Yeah, here we go, here we go. This is good. You guys, just attack these guys. I was kind of hoping to close the net, but these peasants have pulled back. These guys will break in no time whatsoever. I just want the horse to come forward, all right? If the general wants to come forward, that'd be great. You're wavering. Okay, one of you, get in some attacks over here. Technically, you don't actually... Okay, both the forces broke. <laughs> interesting. That's, that's interesting. Oh, no, hang on. No, mine actually did hold. I thought actually both forces on both sides broke simultaneously. Okay, that's fine then. That's absolutely fine. Now, these guys are going to get slaughtered by actual cavalry right over there. So, you, I want you to move forward, please. You guys just move forward. Get the spearmen in behind you. All of you guys, now start throwing at anything you flipping can. All right? If you guys can actually get a shot in, take it. You guys, take a shot at the actual Roman bodyguard. I don't care if you're hitting your own guys. Honestly, doesn't matter to me. Bring in the other spearmen, ready to hit them too. Because even though we'll take a few spearmen losses, it's worth it to just annihilate this here heavy cavalry. So my guys are backing off at this point, but let's see what this general's gonna do now. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Guys, come on, you've got a shot. Guys, you've got the you've got the shot. You totally have the shot. Take the just toss the peeler. Toss the flipping peeler. Toss the toss the peeler. Guys, you've got the all right, fine, whatever, I suppose. Right, let's just get in there, get in there. Two units of spearmen, who are actually, you know, actual spearmen, should be able to handle this. You guys get in the rear. Everyone else, just hit this guy with whatever you flipping can. I'm actually going to get the comments 10 says over into here, if we can. Just draw them up right here at the rear. They can just toss in the peeler that way. You guys, charge forward. I need these peasants out of the way. Chase them off. Where are the rest of them? There's no others. That's it. How's this guy doing? He's down to 70. Oh, yeah, look at that. Heavy cavalry is falling apart fast. These guys are taking knocks, but it should be okay. You guys, take out these lads while everyone else just draws up into position. Do it nice and fast anyway, if you'd be so kind. Those peasants are breaking. Some of my lads are breaking too, but that's the Limitane. That's fine. These archers are archers? No! Okay, so we're going to lose some archers here. I don't know why the hell they decided to do that, but they just felt like it. These guys are getting in over here. Honestly, send them in. Just send them in to take care of that. I'm also just going to bring up some of my light cavalry. No, it's too late. They're going to get away at least a little bit. Fine. It's down to 18 or thereabouts. That's not too bad at all. Let's just actually get these guys drawn up straight here. How much did we lose? We lost maybe... Yeah, some heavy spearmen, but honestly, that's what they're for. They took out the general. They did it pretty effectively. We didn't lose much. The comment 10 says have barely been touched. In fact, actually, I don't think they've taken a single casualty yet. This is fine. Okay, first things first. Let's kill the general. He's standing at the front here, so archers can hopefully pull him in nice and easy into a trap. 
of spearmen. So just lay down the fire right there. He should charge straight into these guys in a moment. When he does, uh, we can just surround him and mop him up with spears. So you guys take care of him. Yeah, you guys get over here. You guys get over here. Out of guard position, actually. Just get around him. Stab him down. Look at that. Their actual leader is surrounded by spears. And down he goes. Okay, nice and easy. So with that done, at this point their morale will be even lower. Archers, finish off the last of them. I want them just dead and off the field. Next up, Spearman pull back. I need the common to 10 says to get some kills and hopefully a little bit of XP. So these guys are just hanging out of the front right now. And as soon as you guys are disengaged, activate your throwing peeler. Please go for, yeah, these guys over here, if you'd be so kind. I'd like you to target over... There you go. Some lovely peeler. We'll kill some of you. Hopefully draw the attention of these bastards. I've got a handful of spearmen at the back over here. Honestly, if these peasants want to engage, they'll just be chased off. They'll break as soon as they make contact with these guys. That won't be a problem at all. You guys have not been baited, apparently. Fascinating. Here we go. Archers have got their attention. Pulling them over very, very nice indeed. More peeler. Get tossed into these guys. They are already wavering. And honestly, at this point, I'm happy to just let my troops charge forward. Because, you know, sooner or later, they do need to be allowed to have a little bit of fun. Otherwise, they'll never get any XP. So pull the archers back to make sure we're not shooting our own guys in the back. Which I think we probably just did there a little bit. But now, it should just be an absolute flippin' slaughter. These guys have like 25 defense and an attack of 9. They will just chew through these peasants. I mean, just look at this. At triple speed, we're taking the lightest handful of casualties, but we're just chewing through them so fast. The comment to 10 says are beautiful. There we go. 400 kills, but honestly, pretty much all of that was the Limitane, and their job is to be speed bumps that mean we don't take damage on the main army. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, mission accomplished. So, this place is blue by default, which I believe is on... Yeah, that'll be on normal taxation. It's a large town. If I mask the place, it's nearly ready to become a city. Let's see if I regret this, but I'm gonna occupy it. Because, yeah, let's keep the taxpayers alive. So that is 80% already. 6,000 people. Needs to be a little bit repaired, but I don't have the funds to do it. But that's fine. That's all 100% fine. Now that we're up to 115, that is... Ouch, that's 70% garrison. Maybe I should have burnt this place to the ground. You can't burn everything, though. You can't just burn everything. That would be, like, bad for reasons. Uh, so, let's actually leave behind some Limitane. Okay, that's straight back to red. That's 50%. I need to leave behind more than that just to garrison the place. Right, this is kind of what I wanted to avoid, but... Okay, leave you some archers. What else do you flipping want from me? Yeah, this is 30% unrest and also religious unrest that's going down. So all I need to do is stabilize this place. Keep it happy for just a couple of turns while it calms down. Right, that'll do. I've left just a handful of troops here, but... We can just, you know, collect them later once this place calms down. Also, I was just moving towards Varicum. We've got ourselves a peasant army in the woods. Yes, All right. Unfortunately, I can't keep an eye on those guys too closely. My spy needs to keep going in the right direction. It's too important we figure out what's going on with the flipping hordes. Meanwhile, reinforcements for Spurius Flavius over here. That is now a decent army, which is good. Because Carnuntum, I think I forgot to actually burn its military infrastructure down. So, uh, these guys have actually got some troops. Also, apparently the Franks are really, really angry at me. Which is not good. I don't really want war with the Franks at all. Why? What are they angry about? Is it because we kicked your spy out of our settlement? Because I don't feel like you should be angry about that. You've not got a leg to stand on there. You know what? Carnuntum, I don't mind waiting. Because I'm not just besieging the place right now, I'm also preaching to them. Because at every turn that Spurius Flavius is inside that territory, he is converting more and more and more of them to Christianity. Meaning, yeah, it's going to be easier to keep these guys under control when we do take the place. Plus, with some decent level barbarian infantry inside their territory right here, 
worth just waiting them out. At least maybe one more turn. But Augusta Trevororum, that we're going in now. We've got a decent army. Let's flip and do it. All right, level three settlement slowly getting Christianized. Already has the walls. This will be a good candidate for burning to the ground when we're done. Let's actually look over. Yeah, this will be a good spot right over here. We'll actually insert ourselves over here and then just move in that way. Should be nothing too dangerous. Now, probably let my comment to 10 says have a bit of fun once we actually get into the fighting. Because not only are these guys at full strength, they've got upgraded weapons. Oh, you know what? Go on then. Let's actually let the comment to 10 says have some fun. Doing some flipping wall fighting against peasants. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> stab that guy. You just stab that guy. Stab that guy. Yeah, I feel like these guys are going to murder literally all of these bastards. These peasants haven't even realised there are supposed to be enough fight yet. This is looking good as a starting point. Oh, I think they've actually realised they're supposed to be fighting. But to date, have they even got a kill yet? No, there's just a giant pile of flipping farmers here as proper Roman steel cut straight flipping through them. Love it. Now, this has got to be worth an experience point or two. First unit of peasants goes down. We've taken seven casualties. Move on. Let's go knock down the next. In fact, hang on, are even more coming? Yeah, I think that's at least one unit. Possibly two right there. And here we go. This comment 10 says is up to experience one, which is worth extra attack and extra defense. Experience is invaluable. So grinding some XP against these peasants, very worth doing. The only downside is they are starting to get tired. So their effectiveness is going down. So uh, go on then. Even though it'll cause us a few reinforcements, I do actually happen to have uh, some Limitane right here. I'm just going to send these guys up onto the walls just to surround the peasants, just to make them break a bit faster. Because, yeah, we'll still get the XP for the Comet 10 says, but they'll take a handful less casualties. It's probably worth doing. There we go. They get hit in the back, and now they are breaking. So we can very, very quickly... Why are you guys taking losses? Hang on. Who's actually hitting you guys? How are you losing against routing peasants? How... Okay, Limitane do kind of suck, yes. Now, the problem is, from this angle, it's a bit of a difficult approach to the plaza. So, how am I going to do this? Interesting. If I could just get enough... No, hang on. I'm going to move my archers up onto the walls here. If I get my archers up onto the walls here, I think they should have a shot just into the actual street. If I just move them up there, yeah, you guys get up there. That's absolutely fine. Then I just use the Limitane to bait the general into this spot right here. They should be able to shoot from the walls into him. Yeah, here we go. They've got range to about here. So if I can just pull their general to this sort of a spot into this sort of a unit, we should be able to get some shots in on him. Okay, here we go. First things first. We've just got some peasants versus Limitane. Now, that's pretty much a dead heat. The Limitane will do pretty well, but they won't last forever. And these guys are already shaken. Limitane should not be sent up front. But that's fine, because all I really want them to do is, yeah, route. And ideally, after they route, these guys will pursue. There we go. So they're routing. This was their job. This is what they were supposed to be doing. And if we're very lucky indeed... Yeah, they'll actually route in this direction, and the general will... No. Or they could just all die. That could happen too. Also, why are you routing in, in that direction? You were supposed to kind of fall back in an orderly retreat down the street to lead them into the... Never mind, they seem to have missed the memo as to what we're actually doing here today. I do have some comment tenses right here, but I don't want to throw them into cavalry. That's not a good idea. Oh, I'm not quite sure how this happened. Right, I'm going to engage my own general just to try and counterattack. He's pretty decent and these guys are going to take a few knocks against these guys. That's a shame. I kind of wanted to keep these guys a bit, you know, healthier than that. But what can you do? If it's going to help clear out these guys, it's fine. Deploy my own general in response. These guys are going to take... Ouch, look at that. Ouch, 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 ouch. Oh, well. At the bare minimum, we will chew through these guys as well. It's fine. So, 
There we go. He goes down. They'll break soon. And wavering. Down you go. Fine. That was probably the easier way to deal with it anyway. It's just I didn't really want to lose the comment to 10 says. Here we go. And now we can just lay down rolling archer fire protected by the comment to 10 says. That will be fine. Lure these guys over here. Start murdering them. Yeah, take down whatever is left of the general's bodyguard. He can just be murdered like that. And now the peasants can go down too. Spot on. And there we go. Job done. So we got a little bit of XP out of that. Unfortunately, yeah. We did lose some comment to 10 says. Didn't want to do that. That is really unfortunate. In fact, hang on. I need to check. Where the hell can I even retrain those bastards? And as for Augusta, that place is getting slaughtered, unfortunately. I need the money. Repair this place up. They can pay a little bit more in the way of taxes for the time being. And yeah, no barracks. Right, where's the nearest barracks? Actually, I'll tell you what. The old Alamani capital. That's already got a level 2 barracks building. Could boost that up to Legion. Screw it. Cancel the roads. Get the Legion barracks underway. While I've actually got the money for it anyway. More ports. Colonia Agrippina. That's a big increase right over there. This place is happy. In fact, actually, are you happy enough to accept? Yes, you can just accept normal taxes. Not least as pagan unrest is going down there as well. Good. Now, one thing to keep in mind, of course, when the hordes arrive, the hordes have religion too. It is possible there'll be a swing back in favor of paganism when the hordes show up, Purely because apparently the Huns will also be winning people over to their religion. Now, where are we financially right now? Honestly, that's not bad at all. We're bringing taxpayers back into the empire. Projected right now, minus 300. We've almost, 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 almost taken care of the deficit. If I can actually put up taxes a bit more, various spots around here. How's that going to do? Minus 100. We're almost actually in profit, which would be flipping lovely if that was true. And apparently Oppius Flavius just got married. So I'm not sure if he just met someone in Bordeaux or something, but yeah, apparently he has a wife now. That's lovely. You know what? Screw it. I want Carnuntum back and I think I've got enough troops to pull it off with some actual comment ten says right here. Right, you stupid bastard. We're coming for you too. Oh, yes, and another new feature in Rogue Total War. Night battles. So, on this occasion, it's purely an aesthetic thing. But, in the event that you attempt a night attack, just like in later Total War games, if there are reinforcements on the enemy side, where the general in question doesn't have the night fighter ability, then you are in very, very good shape indeed, because those reinforcements aren't allowed to show up. Beautiful. It was also just very pretty in general because everyone was carrying these lovely little torches and uh, flaming arrows lit up the map beautifully and there were lots of lights inside the buildings. Uh, yeah, the night battles in this game were actually quite pretty and sorry, did we just tell the priest to man the battering ram? <laughs> Bloody hell, zealous lot, aren't they? Oh, here we go. Some beautiful flaming arrows from my archers. Head in there, start taking these guys apart, beautiful. And yeah, they actually kind of cast little bits of light around them. The lighting was slightly weird with the little kind of blobs of light around the fire arrows. But I thought it worked quite well, actually. I thought it looked quite attractive. So, we've got ourselves some actual proper infantry in this town. But, the hardest hitting infantry are spearmen, and I've got archers. Archers do an excellent job versus spearmen, so we should be able to take these guys apart pretty easily. Right, time to just send in the first bit of bait. See who actually responds to that. And you guys, move over to this side, please. Move over to this direction. And did you just immediately break? Bloody Limitane. Right. Okay, fine. You managed to lure some of these guys forward. That's fine. Now you're shooting some more people in the back. Yeah, very hard battles. Obviously, you had massive morale penalties the enemies didn't have to deal with. So, uh, sometimes it was just ludicrously unfair. But that's okay. Even a routing unit can actually pull these bastards forward straight into fire arrows. Right, let's send in some proper flipping infantry right now. My barbarian spears. So, some of these guys are retreating immediately. Are you actually heading in this direction? I think you might be, you know. Let's just see what we can do here. Where's their general? Which way is he going? He's uh, he's backing off. Okay, fine. He's going the other way around. That's a shame. Yeah, this was my mistake. Leaving them with bloody militia barracks. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. 
Okay, what's left? Damage Limitane. Yes, a major barbarian infantry still at full strength, pretty much. And uh, the bodyguard. First things first, I want to lure out the bodyguard into Miss Spears. So, can we get any light taps on him just to draw his attention? Can you guys actually get a shot in at all, or... No, I think right now you haven't got the angle for it. That's fine. I'm just going to bring my own spears a little bit further forward. I've got the combat ten says right there. I'll just pull them back for the moment. Because what I really want to do is position my archers in such a way as the only unit they can hit is the actual cavalry. So... This looks like this should be good, because the house should be blocking everything else. Yeah, now just stop for a second. Come on, guys, respond. Respond for me, please. Now they're probably too far beyond. Can you guys get a shot in over the top of the house? Probably, yeah, just a handful. Just a few light taps over there, but they don't seem interested for now. Now, weirdly, their general is going all the way around the back here. Okay, he's going, he's looping around the back, hang the flip on here, what on earth are you doing? Oh, technically he is actually going to get around the back towards my archers, that's, that's true. By the way, these guys are being hit by, yeah, I think spears from the Limitane. Right, um, well if that's going to happen, who's actually going to block for, okay, you guys get into position, this isn't really something I foresaw actually. The comment 10 says, you guys fall back. For the time, if I actually don't, don't fall back because you're the guys who should be... Right, you go forward. These guys fall back. This is all going to be fine. What the hell are you guys doing? Oh, I think some people have got confused and everything's about to go wrong. Wait, hang on. I think I've accidentally just done some baiting here. Right, hang on. Who's, who's responding to who right now? The spearman was sort of interested for a second. The general's falling back. Bloody hell, guys. Make up your minds. Oh, here we go. I think we've got what we wanted here. Yeah, here we go. My spearmen are actually on top of the general's bodyguard right now. So they will take some knocks, but... They will either be able to win or they'll actually do a lot of damage. I'm going to bring up my priests for a bit of a morale boost. Because these guys are... Wow, they're wavering already. That's that's a concern. Right, you guys. Keep firing. And don't waver. Oh, flip me. Okay. You guys, get back, get back, get back. Let's get the archers out of the way here. Bring in the heavy hitters. Bring in the flipping heavy hitters. My archers are about to take some knocks. Toss some javelins straight at these guys. And... Completely failed to really hit them with anything, but that's fine. Get the flip in there, and the priests can start chanting, which is going to provide a nice little bonus right there. These guys are shaken. They'll be fine. I'm bringing up my own lads, so there we go. There's some good priesting. It's kind of directed in the wrong direction, but there you go. We've got some proper Catholicism right there, and these guys, yeah, they'll stand their ground. They'll stand their flipping grounds. Right, get my own general involved there as well. And there we go. Their leader goes down. No problem at all. You guys just hide over there in that convenient little cubby hole. These guys should now be able to handle pretty much all the rest of it by themselves uh, with the backing of some Catholic priests. So here we go. The comment 10 says, taking on the barbarian spearmen right now. And look at that. Look how fast these guys are going down. They're pushing me backwards because they've got the numbers, but we've got the strength. It's swords versus spears. You don't want to be a spearman going up against swords. No, you do not. So these guys will just be able to chop through all of this. Yeah, there we go. There we flipping go. Follow it up. Destroy them. At this point, I'm just going to let them have the XP because, yeah, they'll hopefully pick up one point of XP from all of that. Lovely. Chop down all of them. Chop down the Limitane as well. The Limitane can't do a thing to this much armor. So now it's just a question of slowly slaughtering our way through them. Lovely. There we go. Yet more losses I could have done without, but you can't make an omelet without cracking at least a few Roman eggs. Now here's interesting. This place is already on yellow. I was planning to burn it to the ground anyway, but... Hmm. Alright, you know what? I'm going to give you guys a chance to behave. So yeah, 100% right now. Lower the tax rate. And that is 60% garrison. And how's Christianity doing? Oh, look at that. Christianity is at 87%. Because this guy has really won them over. But more importantly... Oh, look at those financials. We're actually making a profit again. 
I've managed to piece enough of the empire together, combined with enough new ports, roads, whatever, that we're actually not losing money. I have eliminated the deficit, and we've got more to do yet. Northern Spain needs to be reclaimed. Avaricum needs to be reclaimed. And actually, that'll be pretty easy because their army is over here. Trying to ambush in the woods, but they decided against it because I had vastly more strength. We've also got ourselves a decent little frontier again, all right? The frontier is looking okay. I feel like we can hold against... Well, we can hold against the Franks. As for the Hortz... Still haven't seen them. Don't know what they're doing right now. And as I've just got the tiniest bit of money right now, yeah, any town I've taken back, anyone else need any significant repairs? Yeah, there we go. This place needs the governor's palace restored. We'll get that done right now. In fact, Carnuntum's looking good, all things considered. So at this point, Aquincum's looking a bit more dodgy. I'm going to actually, yeah, deploy you back home over here. There we go. That's looking better. That's looking good over there. Now, how many troops can we actually take out of this place? 90% right now, of which 40% is... Uh, yeah, 40% is actually garrison. Fine, so we're going to need to leave some troops behind, but we should be able to take some of this with us. Yeah, that'll have to do for now. We can actually do some retraining here, because we do actually have the barracks. And this place is... Yeah, it should be fine for now. It's slowly getting more Christian. The unrest will fade. Carnuntum, we should now be able to hold. It's probably time we start considering what's the deal with Salona. No, still plaguey. Right, leave it alone for the time being. Too much plague right now, but I could probably do with doing some retraining. Let's actually get this army back up to strength. Tell you what, we don't need all of these troops. Get rid of one of these units of cavalry. I want to make a bit more money. All right, we've almost sorted the economy out here. I'm feeling good about this. This has been a good few opening turns for Western Roman Empire. This is looking promising. Still, now I've actually said that, it's all going to fall apart immediately. So, let's end this turn right here and see what catastrophe is about to happen next. Well, the game's not immediately popped up anything. And that's normally what it does when you're about to horribly die. Obviously, flipping... Gosh darn it, Bordeaux. Alright, I made the decision not to burn you to the ground. Don't make me regret that. I'm going to give these guys a slightly bigger chapel. That should, hopefully, keep them calm. And maybe I ought to send... Oh. I don't know where the flipping... Oh no, yes I do. I know exactly where the peasants are. They're inside of Varicum. Right, in which case... I don't need that cavalry. I'm going to send that over there just to keep those guys under control, but I should have just burnt that town. I'm spending way too much garrisoning it, and I tell you what, 3 comma to 10 says they can handle this many peasants. That's not a problem at all. So get in over here, start building. Problem is, it's going to take me a little while to get inside, but one tower is probably enough, actually. So that should be fine. Rebels are starting to pop up around here, too. I'm pretty sure there's one somewhere around here. Haven't seen you recently. You just drop down some more watchtowers. We've got very poor visibility around Spain. Head around over here. Join up with these guys. This should be enough to take care of Salamantica. That's absolutely fine. Any new news from down over here in Salona? Plague's recovered, but give it a few turns just for safety. Mediolanium. Oh, yeah, this is good. 105. That could actually go... Yeah, screw it. Take more flipping money. Slowly edge up that tax rate. And excuse me... Don't you flipping build a navy. That is not cool. Not cool at all. I don't know if this is enough to take Lepkis Magna. I might need to actually uh, siege them out. That is... Yeah, these are not great troops. Not great troops at all. Possibly I'll just slowly wear these guys down a bit. But then again, I did say I was waiting to see the next catastrophe. So, the Berbers are floating around near my borders. Their attack was only a matter of time, absolutely. So, okay, the Berbers are showing an interest in Carthage, which means sooner or later, Carthage is going to be needing some flipping troops. Which is fine, which is 100% fine. We can get Carthage some troops and oh bloody hell, Carthage. It's growing 3.5%. That is 
That's unmanageable. That's really flipping unmanageable. Right, Carthage is going to be a nightmare to hold. We might need to be relying on games to do that. But here's the one I'm more worried about. So, the Eastern Roman Empire has deployed a quite significant number of troops in what distinctly looks like our direction. Now, they might be heading to take Salona, which would be annoying if they were the ones to actually get it, but I'm more concerned they're heading for a quincum, which they might well be. It was only a matter of time until they attacked us. Oh, and we've got trouble up north too. Up beyond what's presumably supposed to be like Hadrian's Wall, there is an army being put together by the Picts. And that is... Yes, yeah, Scotty chariots, dogs, giant badass men with two-handed swords. I'm not sure we've got enough in York to see that off. We've got one unit of proper heavy infantry, two terrible, terrible archers. We do have some proper cav, though. That's pretty much all we flipping got right there. We might want to consider training some more troops down in London just to send reinforcements north. I'm very concerned, but they can't get to me yet. Not quite yet. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I would say that is enough for now. We have done a good job beginning the fight back here. We may have lost a significant part of the Empire in the first part, but we've got a large part of it back already. And I think we're ready next time to just wrap that up. We'll be able to take back a Varicum, no problem whatsoever. Salamantica shouldn't be an issue either. Down over here, Lepkis Magna. Honestly, screw Lepkis Magna. That will be constantly revolting on and off through the whole game. Just because it's so bloody far out of the way. I don't even care about it. I'll burn it to the ground and it won't even count. The game won't bloody care. But yeah, new threats are starting to emerge. Because just when you start to think you're on top of things. Just when, say, you know, you've rebuilt the empire. Or the economy's starting to look at least somewhat passable. New threats are always coming out of the woodworks of the Western Roman Empire. And we've got them coming from every direction. I think we've got Berbers coming from the south, Picts from the north, and our supposed friends in the east, the perfidious Eastern Romans, I think they are coming for us too. So, we'll see how many of those threats materialise next time, ladies and gentlemen. Together with, hopefully, figuring out what's going on with the hordes. Because now I've got two spies heading in that direction. This spy over here in particular is almost into territory we've not been to before. And yeah, these are the Sarmatians right here. And the Vandals do start very nearby to the Sarmatians. So uh, they're somewhere around here. They're somewhere around here. Though if we're very, very lucky indeed, they will be heading south into Eastern Territory to go and sack Constantinople. That'd be marvellous. If they want to do that, that'd be great. We'll see if that's what happens next time, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Rome Total War with Barbarian Invasion. Thank you very much, and goodbye. No, this no, this no, guy's no. enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. <laughs> oh my god. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear. And then oh, in come the chariots. Yeah.